Now, given these numbers as a backdrop, let me get into some of the comments made by those who tout a singularity and a transhumanist future. Back in 2009, H Plus Magazine came out with a short survey of the authors of the website called Sex and the Singularity. These pro transhumanists were asked the question Is there sex in the post human or singularitarian future? in which each had 400 words or less to respond. Here are some of the highlights, if you want to call it that. Michael Anzimov said, quote, Conventional sex will likely persist in a transhumanist future, but only as a small subset of a much larger space of pleasurable activities which have been deliberately engineered. Sex is often idolized in our culture because it can be a largely risk-free form of pleasure, Given that sex has zero cost and great pleasure, it seems reasonable that everyone reading this should attempt to engage in it more often. Extropia da Silva stated, quote, Sex for procreation will be separated from sex for pleasure. Polyamorism will be the norm. Relationships will be tried out in simulation, combining variations of each self. Weeding out combinations that do not optimize cooperation and mutual gain. Selective memory editing may be used to erase memories of suboptimal relationships, leading to love affairs that are always subjectively ideal. A committed relationship would be to accept a complete merging of two selves. True love would be expressed by transferring the two uploads into a single, higher capacity brain, such as the sentient internet itself in which both minds run simultaneously. Such twin individuals might merge with others, resulting in an expanding hive mind. Ray Kurzweil stated, quote, The short answer is yes. The longer answer is that we've already separated at least some of the original biological function of sex from its social and sensual function. Human intelligence is directed towards our body, meeting its needs and desires, and we will continue to have bodies in the singularitarian future, except that we won't be limited to just one. We'll have different virtual bodies in different virtual reality worlds, and morphable nanobot swarms for real worlds. A couple could become each other in a virtual reality environment and experience the relationship from the other's perspective. We'll be limited only by our imagination. That will be true in general for virtual reality, which is where we will ultimately spend most of our time. Alex Lightman stated, quote, The primary purpose of the singularity will be seen, after the fact, to be awesome sex. There will be exponentially more sex, with exponentially more interfaces, and with exponentially more measures of pleasure. We will be installing bioports into our body, a la the Matrix or Sleep Dealer, each of which can stimulate our nervous system. In heterosex, men penetrate women, but with this, men and women will interpenetrate each other, multiply, and, as with USB 2.0 daisy chaining, so will men, women, and androids be able to multiply, interpenetrate locally or remotely. After the singularity, most transhumanists who choose to stay embodied will present as empathic metamorphs, possibly surrounded by utility fog that enables us to become anyone or anything, seemingly anywhere, and with telepathy common, to be able to transform ourselves into our lover's heart's desire at a moment's notice. I love the future. Bring it on. Natasha Vita Moore says, quote, What happens when our human genitalia is gone? What will we rub instead? Exosex, sex outside the biological body, would be stimulated in virtuality, much like Second Life or Skype and other digital formats where sex is enhanced, extended, digitized, and synthetic. It would be more real than real, a hyper-real experience. The entire field of post-human sex could give new meaning to sex freedom and gender differentiality, where a person could have different scenarios depending on what form or type he, she is in. Human form, membrane, 
wet sex, semi-human form, neurological ecstasy, post-human form, multiple exchanges of digitized codes reaching a crescendo. Please pray with me. Lord, I ask you to cleanse our minds and our hearts over what we just heard. Please help us see clearly what is going on and why, but also how we can reach these people with your grace and love. In Jesus' name, amen. I had to throw in the prayer, but seriously, my creep meter went off the charts reading these quotes. Were they trying to simply provide shock value, or are these the genuine thoughts of our most brilliant and forward-thinking minds of today? And seriously, daisy-chaining men, women, androids for multi-penetration locally or remotely? This is literally taking the orgy-porgy envisioned by Huxley and taking it to the next level. I hope you realize why I am so desperately passionate about speaking on these issues. Such ideologies are going to become more and more prevalent. These are the issues that your children and your grandchildren will be facing. And as much more as our standard church-going folks are up in arms about culture preaching sex before marriage, these visions for what sex will become in the singularity and beyond should make any believer very concerned about the direction of humanity and thus consider end times prophecy seriously. I want to close today's post by revealing the verses leading up to the one I quoted earlier from 1 Corinthians 6 and another verse from 1 Chronicles. Quote, The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord will become one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6, 13-20 When Paul tells us to glorify God in your body, I think he means it literally. By prayer, worship, and being salt and light, I believe we are glorifying God. In other words, glorifying God is a lifestyle, not something you do just on Sundays. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, the serpent's there in the garden, right, with Eve, and, you know, he's, he's tempting her, you know, with the fruit, and he says, you're not going to die, you will, you will not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? So, what do we see there? We see three promises of the serpent. He says, immortality, right, uh, you're not going to die. Your, your eyes will be open, you'll have greater wisdom and understanding and knowledge, right? And you shall be as the gods. You know what's funny about those three? Adam and Eve already had them. <laughs> Adam and Eve already had those three. They were already immortal. Death didn't come until after they took a bite. 
their eyes open, being having greater wisdom and understanding. I mean, come on, they walked in the garden with God, the creator of the universe. It's kind of like, you know, hey, God, how did the uh, Milky Way get there? Well, let me tell you, Adam. I mean, how much more wisdom and understanding do you need than walking in the garden with God every day, the creator of the universe, right? And you shall be as gods they already were. They were made in the image and likeness of God. So the three promises of the serpent, they already had. And they took a bite and they lost all three. And man has been trying to get it back ever since, uh, apart from God. I think the real agenda of transhumanism is to get back the three things that uh, humans lost in the garden and to be like God. Achieve immortality apart from God, have supernatural ability, uh, become the gods of the ancient world. Uh, you know, that's the agenda. That's what they're working on. Uh, and it's happening. It's happening very quickly and we need to be aware of it.